Hello there. In this video I'll be showing you how I tune cars in Project Cars 3. Comparing to PC2, the tuning setup in PC3 is simplified. The tuning settings are divided into four categories. The brakes chassis tires, the suspension, the spring dampers, and the gearing differential. As you can see in these menus, there are no asymmetry settings for left and right wheels, no fast and slow damping nor bump stop in the damper settings, no numbered gear ratio in the gearing settings, and only basic settings available in the differential tuning. There is also no telemetry HUD to see what the car's doing while practicing nor racing. Very little data analysis software support PC3. Tuning in PC3 only makes sense when the car is fully upgraded. In PC3 I tune cars in two ways, the simple way and the thorough way. I usually test cars starting with default setups. If I managed to get consistent lap time very close to the highest goal, but failed, I'd try to tune the car in the simple way. Before starting to tune the car, I usually practice till I get consistent lap time. It's very important to create a baseline like this before tuning, otherwise it could be very difficult to tell if it's making progress or not. There are cars which have obvious problems with the default setup. In those cases, I would try to fix the problem first. The most common problem is power oversteer when exiting corners and accelerating, on rear-wheel drive cars. The rear wheels would rev up too fast and lose grip. The driver must hold back the throttle to keep the car in control and therefore compromise the lap time. The fully upgraded XJ220S with default setup is a good example here. It's not only power oversteered at corner exit, but it also twists at high revs. I practiced and got a decent lap time, 1 minute 23.418 seconds, less than half a second away from the highest goal. The first thing I tried was lowering the ride height settings. I lowered both front and rear ride height by one click, and they are at the lowest. It's not easier to handle, but I got a slightly faster result, 1 minute 23.220 seconds, closer to the highest goal. To tame this beast, we need to move some grip to the rear end, so the rear wheels won't slip so easily. Lowering the rear anti-roll bar and the rear spring rate will help. Increasing the front anti-roll bar and spring rate also do the same thing. I lowered the front and increased the rear downforce as well. The downforce settings work better at higher speed while the spring settings work at all speed range. I decreased the rear camber by one click to stabilize the car a bit when accelerating on the straight line to get rid of the twisting at high revs. I tried all these one by one and see if the car was faster, and easier to handle. I got 1 minute 22.813 seconds with these settings, past the highest goal already, but there is a problem still with the car. Let's take a closer look at it. The car rotates too much at turn in when braking, the rear wheels are locking up and slipping. The driver must hold back the throttle and wait for the rear wheels to restore the grip and therefore losing time. Oversteering at turn-in is another common problem that can be easily fixed. In this case, we only need to move the brake bias forward a couple of clicks. After the fast tweaking, the fully upgraded XJ220S became much easier to handle, and I got 1 minute 22.693 seconds average lap time at Dunnington Park. It's clearly faster. Although I have already achieved the highest objective, there is one more thing to do in the simple way of tuning process, the tire pressure. Adjusting tire pressure will change the contact patch of the tires, and the grip of the tires will be changed accordingly. The physics of the tires in PC3 is simplified, tire temperature doesn't change at all, while racing or practicing. We can only use the trial and error method, adjust only one setting one click at a time. Then test to see if the car goes faster or not, easier or worse to handle. I'd start by lowering both front and rear tire pressure one click at the same time and test the car for a few laps. 
If the result was slower, I'd try the opposite. If the car was faster or it's too hard to tell, I'd keep on adjusting the same direction until I got a slower result. In this way we would roughly find the appropriate tire pressure settings. I got my best result 1 minute 21.920 seconds average lap time, by lowering both front and rear tire pressure one click and no more. At the beginning with the default setup, I started from 1 minute 23.418 seconds, and now I'm 1.498 seconds faster. That's a huge progress by tuning the car in this way. In some cases, the goal would be very close at this point but not there yet. I would try to adjust the front and rear tire pressure separately, based on the best settings so far. Such as lowering the rear tire pressure by one click and test again. I would try all possible front and rear tire pressure combinations around the best settings so far, up to three clicks away. In this way I would find out the optimized tire pressure setting for this car on this track. I keep track of the tuning process by using data sheets, logging adjusted value and the resulting lap time, so I can tell exactly what settings are better. If the optimized tire pressure didn't get me there, I would probably give up and try another car, or start to tune it in the thorough way if I believe the car's got potential. It is time consuming and tedious to tune the car from scratch, so I'd do it only when necessary. Even though the car physic is simplified, and the telemetry data analysis is out of reach, tuning cars in the thorough way is still possible. Tuning from scratch, the car had better be fully upgraded. The most important part of tuning setup other than the tire, is the spring settings, including spring rate and anti-roll bar stiffness. We might be able to gain up to a couple of seconds per lap by adjusting these spring settings, depends on the cars. We need to find out the best spring settings so that the car can carry more speed through the corners. While I was testing cars of the hypercar class, the LaFerrari couldn't reach the highest goal with the default settings no matter how hard I tried. It's only a couple of tenths of a second away, so I decided to tune it from the scratch. Let's move to the custom event and test the LaFerrari on an oval track first. There are six oval tracks that can be used as testing courses in Project Cars 3. I prefer testing slower cars at Knock Hill and Mojave, and high-speed cars at Texas. LaFerrari is a very fast car, so the best oval track for it is the Texas Oval. Switch the mode in the settings to practice, check the weather settings and we're good to go. At the beginning we test with the default settings for a handful of laps to get a good lap time. Let's see what tuning options we have for this car. We don't have downforce settings here. And we don't have damper settings. No gearing, no differential, and that's it. In Project Cars 3, I'd rather leave the damper and gearing settings untouched, because they won't give us much benefit. Maybe a tiny bit if adjusted appropriately, but usually we're blindfolded and just wasting time. So, we'd better focus on the spring settings, which really make a difference. I'll deal with the differential later with another car. When testing cars on the oval track, try to keep driver input as simple as possible. We want to find out how the tuning affects mechanical grip of the car, not the driver's skill. I don't use the brake at all. To slow down the car I lift the throttle at a reference mark on the track side wall, with down gear shifting if necessary. I usually create a new data sheet for each car before tuning and list all default values in there as a baseline and log the best lap time for reference. My best lap time here is 29.152 seconds. Then I adjusted the front spring rate by one click down to 130 newton per millimeter and that's already at the lowest value allowed. When setting up a real sim racing car I used to create an initial setup, with lowest tire pressure, lowest downforce, lowest damper, and lowest differential settings to start with. Since the physic in PC3 is simplified, I'd rather skip this part and save some time. I started the tuning process by lowering the front spring rate, which means to increase the grip at the front wheels, helps the car to rotate more easily in the curves. 
My best lap time is 29.034 seconds, just a little bit faster than the default setup. Since the front spring rate is already at the lowest setting, I lowered the rear spring rate by one click, 150 Newton per millimeter is the lowest setting as well. By lowering the rear spring rate, we move the grip back to the rear end, and we have both front and rear spring rate lowered by one click at the same time. The grip balance probably won't change a lot but lowering the rear spring rate might help the car to accelerate a little bit faster because it is a rear wheel drive car. Now we know that by default both spring rate settings are only one click above the lowest values. I got 29.008 seconds lap time. It looked a little bit faster, but to me it's too close to tell. Since both front and rear spring rate settings are already at the lowest, and I'm not sure if the car is faster or not, let's try lowering the front anti-roll bar. It does the same thing in corners as lowering the front spring rate, which is moving the grip toward the front end. I got 28.994 seconds, just a tiny bit faster, still too close to tell. At this point I started to think that I should try increasing the rear spring rate first because it seemed like benefit from adjusting toward more oversteer tendency. So, I raised the rear spring rate one click, back to the default setting. And I got 28.984 seconds lap time. To me it's a proof that I should keep on going in this direction. After a few rounds of adjusting and testing, I reached the highest rear spring rate setting, 250 Newton per millimeter. And I got 28.950 seconds. Although there's not much progress, but yes, the car is getting faster. Both spring rate settings are now already at their limits, I started lowering the front anti-roll bar again. Let's skip the tedious process and jump to the result. With the lowest front anti-roll bar setting, 30 Newton per millimeter. I got 28.883 seconds lap time. The car is now obviously oversteered. I kept on moving grip to the front end by increasing the rear anti-roll bar tension. With the rear anti-roll bar setting at 50 Newton per millimeter. I got my best lap time. 28.819 seconds We're now done with the springs, it's time to tweak the tire pressure settings. It's the same as the simple tuning process, and I found the sweet spot at 2.07 bar, 29.99 psi, for both front and rear tires. My best lap time is 28.763 seconds. We're done with the oval testing. Let's look at the settings we have. LaFerrari doesn't have adjustable downforce, so I skipped tuning it. I didn't touch the suspension tab because they make very little difference, except for the ride height settings. LaFerrari has ride height settings at the lowest by default, so I left them untouched. To adjust the ride height, we need telemetry data and see if the car's bottom out on the track. We also need to trial an error to find out if the car is faster or not when lowering the ride height. There are no damper settings for this car, no gearing diff settings neither. Now we head back to the track. The settings I got from the oval track won't work on the road track. There were not much longitudinal force applying on the tires at the oval track, no braking at all, only a little bit acceleration. The tuning result should be obvious oversteering at mid corners on road tracks. We need to check and fix the problem by moving some grip back to the rear end first. I got 1 minute 36.627 seconds average lap time with the oval settings. Let's skip the tedious process and jump to my tuning result. In order to fix the oversteering problem, I lowered the rear spring rate to 150 Newton per millimeter, and the rear anti-roll bar to 25 Newton per millimeter. We can raise the front spring rate and anti-roll bar settings to reduce oversteer as well. It's hard to tell which way is better without testing. I got faster and faster results lowering the rear spring rate, so I stuck to that direction. I also set the rear camber at minus 2.1 degrees, to enlarge the contact patches when on the straights so the car would accelerate faster. 
my best result is 1 minute 35.890 seconds, finally reached the highest objective. I started with the default settings from 1 minute 36.380 seconds, so that's 0.490 seconds faster, almost half a second gained. Let's switch to another car and see what we can do with the downforce and differential settings. This car is a Pagani Zonda Sync Roaster, and my goal is to beat 1 minute 23 seconds average lap time at Dunnington Park GP circuit. With the default settings I got 1 minute 23.074 seconds average lap time, only fractions of a second away from the highest goal. In the first page of the tuning options, we have downforce settings in this car. Also, in the last page, we have the differential settings. Before we tune these settings, we must first find out how the springs work without their interfering. So, I set both downforce settings to zero. The differential settings are a little more complicated. To remove the differential locking effects, we need to set the locking as low as possible, which is called open differential. I set both ramp angle at 90, and the preload down to 10. That's the lowest differential settings we can get. Now we start the tuning process, just like what I did with the LaFerrari on the oval track, to find out the best tire pressure and spring rate settings. When setting up a real sim racing car, we need to set up different downforce balance settings, at the end of the oval track tuning process. Higher downforce setting creates more drag and slow the car down on the straights, but it probably would help maintaining higher speed in corners. Depends on the road tracks, we usually need low, mid, and high downforce settings. For example, the rear downforce setting for this car, Zonda, the adjustable range is from 0 to 6 degrees. We can set the low downforce at 0 degree, mid downforce at 3 and high at 6. Then we tune the front downforce to balance the corresponding rear downforce setups. In this video I'll skip this part, leaving both downforce settings at zero, and set it up later at the road track. At the end of the tuning process here, I got my best lap time with both tire pressure settings at 31.49 psi, front spring rate at the lowest, 131 newton per millimeter, and the rear spring rate at 158 newton per millimeter. Let's go back to the Dunnington Park. I tested the car with the best oval settings. We need to examine the car's behavior at the corners very closely. There are high speed corners that are dominated by the aero settings, mid and low speed corners dominated by suspension and diff settings. Also, there are three stages in each corner, turn in, mid corner and corner exit. We must distinguish what the car's doing in each stage, in different type of corners. The open differential setting is causing oversteer at coasting when turning in, and understeer when accelerating at corner exit. Also with the minimum locking, the power output is compromised. I got 1 minute 24.732 seconds average lap time, and we need to adjust the diff first. I set the coast ramp to 75 degrees, so the car would get less oversteered when turning in. For the power side I set it back to the default value, 60 degrees. I thought this would probably cause obvious power oversteering with the oval spring settings but no. I can still handle more power oversteering at corner exit. It's still a little oversteering at turn in, I need more lock at the coast side. At this second run on the road track we need to focus on obvious problems. The car oversteered at high speed corners and crests, I'd like to try the mid downforce setting in the next run. I got 1 minute 23.8 seconds average lap time. Almost a whole second faster by tuning the diff alone. So, I set both downforce settings at the middle. Set the power ramp down to 45 degrees, which means to add more lock to the power side, and set the coast ramp to 65 degrees to reduce the oversteering when slowing down. Now the car is a bit oversteered at mid corner. At the high speed corners it's a little bit oversteered at mid corner too. I will try to move suspension grip to the rear end to fix the overall oversteering at mid corners. Also noticed that the car's still a tiny bit oversteered at turn in. I will add more lock to the diff at the coast side in the next run. 
I got 1 minute 22.783 seconds average lap time, beat the highest goal already, but it's very difficult to push the car on the limits consistently. In order to move the grip to the rear end we can either lower the rear or raise the front spring rate. We need to try both to find out which way is faster. By raising the front spring rate 2 clicks, I got 1 minute 22.580 seconds average lap time. By lowering the rear spring rate 2 clicks, I got 1 minute 22.967 seconds, it's clearly slower. With the higher front spring rate setting, the car is still a little bit oversteered at mid corner. I lowered the front down force by one click and raised the front spring rate one more click. I got 1 minute 22.480 seconds average lap time, about 6 tenths of a second faster than the default setup. The car is quite nervous at this point, but I'll stop tuning it. There are some other settings I didn't touch in this video. Let's have a quick look at them. I don't touch the weight balance because the default values are always very good. Changing this value will move the static CG of the car longitudinally and change the cornering behavior. In general, moving weight to the front will increase understeer, moving weight to the rear will increase oversteer. I don't touch the dampers in PC3 because I don't have proper data analysis software and adjusting them blindly probably won't get much benefit. You may think them as a fine-tuning resort for the spring settings. Lowering the bump setting will move grip to that end, raising it will move grip to the opposite end. Raising the rebound setting will move grip to that end and lowering it will move grip to the opposite end. The effect is quite subtle. To set up dampers properly is complicated, I'd rather leave them alone. In the gearing section there is only a final drive setting. Tuning the final drive ratio will change the acceleration and final speed. Raising final drive ratio will increase acceleration at the cost of a lower high speed. Lowering final drive ratio will get less acceleration but a higher top speed. Adjust this value to reach top speed at the fastest part of the circuit. I don't touch it in PC3 because there are no numbered gear ratios to be adjusted with the final drive ratio, the default values are good enough for me. That's all. If you want to know more about tuning setup, such as the suspension settings that I didn't mention in this video, you can find more info on the Project Cars Insider's Guide web pages. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.